Hey guys, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. There we go. Hey, we're right side up today. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I always love when things work out right. <laughs> good evening. I was looking for something this morning that I can't find. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Some other faces that I did recently. I put them away. <laughs> so I don't know where the away place is. I guess that's okay because it would just distract you guys. So I really only have... Oh, by the way, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday Live. Um, we'll give everybody a couple minutes to join us. Like my new reading glasses. I got them on Amazon. Um, we are going to do simple faces. Good morning, Lisa. This is the PDF document that's available in my Etsy shop um, today. Hello, Jerry. Hey, Mark. Um, it is, I think it's eight pages and it goes through a summary, a materials list, specific colors I used when I created the doc, the sample samples and the documents. And along with pictures, good morning, uh, a picture of my um, color key from the palette of watercolors I used. So you can see all the different colors I have in this palette. This is the Daniel Smith palette. A couple of sample sketches. I do questions and answers, Patricia, while we're broadcasting. Definitely feel free to ask me questions while we're broadcasting. That's not a problem. Even if I'm painting, it's okay. I'll continually look up to look for questions. Um, and here is a picture of the samples that I painted to create this document. And when this video from today's broadcast goes on to YouTube, um, as part of the bonus at the end of the uh, broadcast, live broadcast video, I'll put the video, a sp sped up version to music um, of the video that I actually created this, these two little samples from. Um, so when I do face, so this is available in my Etsy shop for a download. I think it's $2. Um, if you go to Etsy and you search my name, Gina B. Aarons, my store should come right up. Um, and there's space on here for notes. And I'm going to create one of these going forward for, uh, probably every Watercolor Wednesday broadcast that we do, um, as I can. <laughs> it would be really handy to have an assistant to do these, but anyway. <laughs> Here are the actual samples I did. So I really only have two styles of faces that I do. One of them is sort of like this kind of illustratorly cartoony kind of a face, simple face. Um, and you'll notice these have their eyes closed. It's easier when you're learning to do faces if you're brand new at it to do eyes closed than eyes open. Sure, they're okay to use. Um, try um, um, mixing them with some gum arabic and really mixing them up well and see if that helps. I don't know what you use to reconstitute them, but I would add some gum arabic to it as a binder and that might help. My other style of face is very expressive and um, um, we are going to do another faces video uh, um, next month and we're going to do more of an expressive uh, face. Uh, today we're going to do this um, simpler one. Um, we're also going to learn how to mix fletch tones. And I have a quick um, video that's going to be coming out on YouTube shortly um, that's just going to be real quick on only mixing flesh tones so that you guys don't have to dig through this entire video to figure out how did she do that again. <laughs> so I just I pulled that out by itself. So that'll be coming up. Before we do anything um, else, let's do some drawing. Don't be afraid of faces. So when you're drawing a face, and I'm going to I'm going to use this black. This is a feud ball pen, um, and I don't think it's waterproof. It might be, but if you're going to do this and you're going to do it in black pen, do use waterproof ink. Um, otherwise, it's going to smear and end up all over the place. I'm going to show you how I draw a face. No matter how many faces classes I take, 
I end up doing my faces the same way. I've always done them this way. I I don't know. So this is this is my face. So I don't do the whole necessarily the whole oval thing and you know drawing the lines. I I almost never do that. If you've taken a face class with me before, um, you know that. Um, so normally speaking, I start with the eyes. Now. You can do eyes closed or you can do eyes open. Eyes closed when you're first learning is a little easier. So for eyes closed, you just want a slight curved line. And I'm doing it in black so that you guys can really see. Normally, you know, I wouldn't do this so dark. And then do another one. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Then I do something for the bridge of the nose, a straight line with a little bit of a curve. Sometimes I'll put um, nostrils, not always, sometimes. Eyebrows. I let the features tell me what shape the face should be. So now before, now that I have this before I put the mouth in, now I will do the sides of the face. And most of my girls seem to have sort of a long skinny face. And I generally speaking do girls unless I'm really thinking about it. I have to sort of focus to really do a boy. This is a very simple nose, mummy's one, and it's this is real easy to do. Then when I do start the lips, you you know, you want it to be directly under the nose. So I start with a, a little bit of a U shape. Then a mountain. Then a mountain. You get this kind of funny, like pulled out M. Then I'm going to come under here and I'm going to do another U shape. And my girls always have big lips. If you guys have seen me do faces before, they always have big lips. And this is when I draw the lips in, which I don't always do, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay. You can give her some eyelashes. Just the suggestion of eyelashes. You don't need to draw them all the way across. Now, if you're doing a male face, less full lips, probably no eyelashes, lower, straighter, less curved brows, and a more square jawline to get a guy a more of a masculine face. Okay, and then a neck. And then I do the hair. The hair, you know, hair, I usually do something like this. And my hair usually looks like you know, almost an afterthought because it really is because my faces are usually about the face. Yeah. All right. So you'll notice, though, when I did the samples, I didn't do a um, bottom lip. Let's see. I mean, an upper lip. You don't have to. And I didn't do nostrils either. This is a printed copy. So I just drew a little bit of a curve for a smile and then the another line to suggest the bottom lip. And I didn't do the nostrils, and she looks just fine. Now, to do um, eyes, I would do the same thing, only I would start with the eyes open. I start with the same kind of a shape at the bottom. And my eyes, generally speaking, always have sort of a flat bottom. This part of the eye, the white part, if you look in the mirror, is called the sclera. The colored part of your eye is called the iris, and we all know the black part's the pupil, right? I was a licensed dispensing optician in another life. <laughs> okay, so that's generally how I do an eye. 
And then of course you have the nose. And the lips. Something like that. Okay. Now it's really interesting when you're practicing doing faces to just, you know, do a partial sketch like this and then paint that in and get really suggestive about it. That's really an interest can be a really interesting art piece. I do encourage you to play and try and experiment. There's no easy way to get better at faces than to practice. <laughs> if there was an easy way, I would tell you guys, there is no easy way. <laughs> you know, you could you could get really you could get really fun with this and just have some fun with it and draw your face. I do recommend that you use um, if you're going to do black, which I do one of the sample faces in black, um, and then paint over it, you use waterproof ink. This one was done in pencil, water-soluble pencil, so it depends on what kind of look that you want. I am going to show you real quick this morning, we're going to do a couple of different ways. I don't know if this ink is waterproof. Let's actually try that first, because I have no idea. Oh, no, see, I didn't think it was. The feud ball's not. I, I was pretty sure it wasn't. So that can be interesting in itself if you know that the ink is not waterproof and you want to add that. Um, this is not totally not the right color. This is Naples yellow, but um, if you want to let that mix with the watercolor paint, that could give you something that's really interesting. But it's going to make your face have some shades of gray that you may not want it to have. Okay, so before we actually paint a face, now we have something else we need to do. So now you know the basics of drawing and kind of illustratorly animated, uh, not animated, cartoon style face. When I first started drawing in, in middle school, I had an art teacher who was a cartoonist. And that's how come I draw faces the way I do. It's his influence. <laughs> he was a good teacher. Okay. So to mix flesh tones in watercolor is the same process as mixing them in acrylic, which I know I've shown on YouTube. So you want to start with, and I'm going to use this white plate. You want something white so that you can really see the colors that you get. You're going to need a scrap of paper. We'll use this one that we were painting, fa uh, drawing faces on. The table's not big enough. Thank you. Um... You're going to need to first mix an orange. So you want the truest red from your palette. This is permanent red, Daniel Smith permanent red. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush. And I want the truest lem uh, yellow. I'm going to use Hansa yellow medium. Also a Daniel's. This is my Daniel Smith color, uh, palette. And I'm going to make an orange. I'm going to bring some water into it. There we go. I've got a nice orange color, but we are nowhere near a flesh tone. Like, I don't know, if you want to do a realistic face, nobody's color face is that color. So what we want to do is we want to sort of... I'm good. How are you, Kimmy? I'm a little bit, you know, coughing and sneezing and, you know, you know how I am. It's Christmas and I can't go to the store because of all the dang cinnamon pine cones. They make me wheeze and have asthma. All right, so this is a nice color of an orange, but it's not a skin tone. To make it a skin tone, you want to brown it up. We're going to purposefully add, make mud on purpose. So we're going to add a tiny, teeny little bit of a true blue. The truest blue you have in your palette, I use ultramarine blue. A little bit goes a really long way. And it's going to make your mixture a little bit browner. That's not brown enough. Just do a little bit at a time. When I did this on camera, the video that's going to be up on YouTube, um, I actually did it wrong the first time. So you actually see on camera how to fix it if you do it wrong. So there's only one way to tell if you've got the right shade. Put it on paper. Now, 
you know you really want to try to when you're learning to do this try to match your own skin color so if you have more of a caramely colored skin or a darker skin then you want this to be more brown and add you know really work at your mixture until you get something that's darker if you're pale and pasty like me you're shooting for something that's you know <laughs> more pale and pasty <laughs> it really depends on the skin color that you are so that's not bad and remember that this is going to dry darker i uh, lighter than it is on here right now that's not bad i think i want it to be a little bit more pink yeah thanks my mom and her irish skin i'm a little bit i'm a tad on the pasty side i didn't get my dad's wonderful italian olive skin unfortunately that's not bad now also you know if you add more water to it it's going to be lighter too see that's not bad i actually like that for a realistic skin color so we're going to go with that because i'm actually happy with that so really play with it and when you get a color that you like you might want to stop for a minute and make some notes how you got there so that you know if you really like that skin color and you wanted to try to duplicate it again, you know how you got there. Thanks, Mark. I try. Um, you know how much red did I add? Just like a brush tip full. Equal parts red and yellow to make your orange. And then add teeny tiny bits of blue in it until you get your um until you brown it up just a little bit. And you want sort of a for me, because I'm so pale and pasty, I want sort of a brownie peach color. If you add too much blue, it's going to turn green. So if you have more of a caramely skin, you might want to experiment with making this color and then adding to it maybe um, from my Daniel Smith palette, um, maybe a color like Lunar Earth which is a reddish brown and adding a little bit of brown to this to darken it up a little bit. I try to stay away from something like sepia or Van Dyke brown that has lots of gray in it because it's just going to make your girl look funny and not in a good way. <laughs> All right, so we're going to set that aside. We've got that ready to go now. <coughs> um... Yeah, let's do let's do this first. So now we're going to draw another face. This time I'm going to use my Derwent Inktense pencil. You could, sure. If you have a skin tone color that you like that's close, start with that and experiment with that. I'm going to show you how to do one of the faces with non-traditional colors. This one is not done in skin tones. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We may be on a little longer today than we have been on in the past. Just FYI. So hopefully you guys grabbed a cup of coffee or, you know, if you need to go grab something, you know, coffee or something. <laughs> so first we're going to do this one. And the color of pencil that you choose is going to alter the color of your paint a little bit. So this is called baked earth and it's a reddish brown color. And first I'm going to draw my face. And I think that we're going to do, you know, in this, in the bonus video, you're going to see both of them eyes closed painted two different ways. But I think today in the demo that we are going to do, um, one eyes open and one eyes closed. What do you guys think about that? Okay. So I'm going to first draw my, we're going to do this first one. Um, eyes open. You can t totally use graphite. If that's what you have, use it. Graphite works really well. So I'm going to draw my eyes open. I'm going to put my eye lower eyelids here. Then my upper eyelids. You know, I try to get my eyes that are close to the same shape, but, you know, if they're not exactly the same, I'm, I'm okay with that. The human face is not even and symmetrical, so it's totally okay if your girl has, you know, one eye bigger than the other or something like that. Don't worry about it. Or boy, if you're doing a boy. I should stop saying girl because maybe you're drawing a boy. 
Okay, and we're going to put our nose bridge in the tip of our nose, put a nose hole. I forget which artist it is calls them nose holes. It might be Effie Wild. I don't remember. Somebody I was watching on Lifebook, I think, last year. I thought that was funny. Yeah, if you want to just do half a face, that's great. I, I do. Most of my Buddhas are all half faces, if you've seen any of my Buddha paintings. Whatever you feel is less intimidated for you that'll get you practicing so you're not afraid anymore. That's the key. So whatever works for you so that you are not afraid to practice anymore. So we're going to draw the eyelid here. She's looking pretty good. Before we put any eyebrows in, and see I put the lips in before I put the face in, but that's okay. Remember, this is a water-soluble pencil, so if I don't get my lines in exactly the right place where I want them, I'm totally okay with that. If you're using graphite, you can just erase it. And you can use graphite and then go over it with pen. And just go over the lines that you like. And I'm going to, I'm doing this a little heavier than I normally would too, so that you guys can see it on camera. Because I know you can't always see the pencil on camera when I do this. I do try to vary my hairstyles up because if I don't think about it, like I'm not really thinking about it right now, they all come out with the same hairstyle. <laughs> I guess that's okay. Watercolor pencils will work. Will work. Okay, so now we've got our girl. Now we can start painting. So unlike other watercolor paintings, when I do these um, faces, I start with sort of medium tones and work my way darker and then lighter. So I'm going to use my skin tone that I have pretty much straight from the palette, um, which is kind of a medium tone. And I'm going to go around the edges of the face. And then I'm going to grab some water and blot my brush on my towel, on my rag. And then I'm going to start to blur the edges inside the face. And that will leave me with this darker tone around the edge of the face, which would be away from the viewer and the parts that are farther away on the face. And it would leave these other parts that would be closer to me lighter. That's what you want. It's real easy. I'm going to turn her around because it'll be easier for me to get this other side. The pencil's mixing with my wet paint on my brush, giving me a um, a little bit of an orangey color, but I'm okay with that because I like non-traditional colors on my face, and it kind of makes her look like she's sun-kissed a little bit. If you want, and plus it looks up, it shows up um, decently on camera. If you want a face that's more realistic. You probably want to start with a pencil color that's more um, closer to a flesh tone. If you have the Prima watercolor pencils, they have flesh tone colored pencils in all the different skin tones. So you probably want to start with a medium skin tone color when you're doing this rather than the color I chose today.
Now this part of the nose would be lighter and brighter. This part would be in shadow. So when I add this color, I'm going to do it to the shadow side. And I'm going to add it to the nose holes and underneath the bridge of the nose. I wish I could remember what artist it was that I saw that calls them nose holes because it's too, too funny. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did around the edges of the face and blend the color out with just water. Now if you end up with some pencil lines in your face, I'm okay with that. I think it just adds to the interest in your face. But if you don't like that, you might want to spend more time doing some blending. So I'm going to add my paint to the upper lid line here and darken that up. And then again with just plain water, blend it out a bit. Remember to have your rag handy in case you get some dark color in a place where you don't want it. Now right here there would be some dark, there would be a shadow right there. We're not doing a realistic face so we're just, you know, this is something that's suggestive of a realistic face. I do do large canvases sometimes. I haven't done one in a while actually because I just I've been doing lots of art journaling and teaching. I'm actually getting the itch to do a canvas. So this is, under the chin there would be a shadow. So I'm adding some of our paint there and then I'm going to, again, blend it out with some water. I just have water on my pencil, I mean my brush right now, I don't have any paint and I'm just activating this pencil. Lift a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. So up here underneath the hairline, there would be some shadow from the hair. So we're going to add some paint and then we're going to bring it down with just water. Underneath the lower lip, there'd be a shadow. Thank you. And although this is sort of an illustratorly uh, cartoon style face, that doesn't mean you want your shadows in unrealistic places. So I'm just going to um, darken in the upper lip. I haven't used any other colors but our flesh tone yet. That's pretty good. Now you all know I like the the puddles and the, you know, lines that you get from watercolor from the puddling. I like that. If you don't, then you want to make sure you really blend that out and takes more time with it than I really am doing this morning. Um, I like that sort of thing, but it's not for everybody. Some people really want to blend it out to be totally smooth. So we're going to let her face dry just a little bit. And we are going to go into use, let's see, I'm going to put this up here so I can see it. Um... We're going to use, I used violet before. I like the violet. 
and maybe we should use that again. I have to read my notes. You could really use any color. It just depends on what you want to do. I'm going to choose Rose of Ultramarine. That's not in the notes. <laughs> Rose of Ultramarine is a purple color. Can you see it here on my plate? I think you can. It's this really pretty reddish pinkish purple color. And we're going to let the face dry just a little bit. And I'm going to come in here with the hair. I'm going to make it a, a bit darker near the face. And then I'm going to bring in some water. Now remember too that you don't necessarily have to wait for your watercolors to dry. I use a heat tool all the time if you guys have watched me um, before on YouTube. I use my heat embossing tool because I do not generally have patience for my watercolor to dry. And I can't do a even a realistic face without adding some kind of goofy color in. I just seem to not be able to do that. So usually I'll do realistic skin tones and then I'll do blue hair or purple hair or something. That's just me. You can do this with shades of brown or blonde or black or whatever. If you do black, think about adding some blue in. Blue is a good highlight for black hair. Probably making you guys dizzy turning her around upside down. I should stop doing that. So just like with any other color, uh, color, I did have all my coffee this morning, I swear. Thank you. Just like with any other watercolor painting, um, it's really all about the layers of marks and colors. Just like with anything else. Right now she's very pa pale. And that's okay, but that's not generally speaking what we want. I'm going to make her eye, start working on her irises, which is the colored part of the eye. And I'm going to use the same color we've put in her hair. I'm going to start by going on the outer edge and like right up and underneath the lid. And I'm going to grab some water and blot my brush. Okay. She looks totally like an alien right now. We are going to go in with um, black and we are going to put in the irises. I mean, sorry, the pupils. Now, this is watercolor. You want to have a highlight of white in the eye. So you either need to go back later and you do it in gel pen or you need to leave a white space when you're doing this and leave a white dot there. Because there's no erasing it. Um, and if you, you could put Chinese white over it, but it's not going to be the same. And this is one of the few times that I just grab black. I didn't use... Um, Payne's gray or anything like that. 
I'm going to go in and I'm going to do this one first, let this one dry just a second longer. And I'm going to take the black with the tip of my brush. I'm barely touching her face and I'm just running a thin, thin line of black along that upper lid. Maybe bringing a few suggestion of eyelashes out at the edge. No digging any holes to China. You could do this with pen too. You don't have to do it with um, the brush. You could also do it in um, a different color. On the sample, you'll see I did it in the same violet color or whatever color it was I used on the hair. The black really shows up. Now for her eyebrows, we're going to take some of our violet and I think I'm going to mix a little bit of black into it. Just darken it up just a tad. This is just a wet brush and I'm going to soften some of those harsh lines, not all of them, but definitely some of them. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to take the same, I'm, I haven't added any new colors. I'm using the same color I have for the um, eyebrows and I'm going to come in here to the upper lip. darken it up some more and the nostrils okay I'm gonna use let's see all right so Daniel Smith has this really great color called opera pink it's a bright almost fluorescent pink color looks like that see that on camera. A little bit of it goes a really long way. So I'm going to put a little bit dab on each cheek. And then just with water, just spread it out just a bit. You want to do it fairly quickly. You don't want this paint to dry. So you can get that suggestion of a cheeks. Oh, I don't know what just happened to my iPad. I'm going to take the opera pink and I'm going to add it to the lip, upper lip. And then uh, just a little bit of it to the lower lip. And there's just a simple, now you could keep going with the shading, you know, you could add um, darker um, colors to the hair. You could go in here with actually some like Prussian blue and, you know, really make her pop by remembering to add those darker colors. My iPad picture is doing this back and forth and I'm not even touching that thing. It's the weirdest thing on the planet. So I just dipped my brush in my Prussian blue. I am barely touching the picture and just adding these like dark, the dark bits really may, will make your painting, whether you're doing a face or something else, it'll really make it pop. And you know, when you're doing these practice faces, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, you, you, you know, you mess it up and you don't like the way it turns out. Okay, do another one. Make some notes on the one that you messed up about what you didn't like about it. It's not it's not your phone. I don't know about my phone because I'm not looking at it, but my iPad, I have my iPad to the side and I'm watching it and it's just flipping around by itself. It's Periscope, people. I don't know. That's the weirdest thing. 
So anyway, make some notes about what you do or don't like about your practice faces until you get, you know, really used to doing them and you find what you really like. So there's one. So shall we do one now in non-traditional colors? Let's see. Yeah, everybody's screen is flipping back and forth. I'm not sure what that's about. Don't turn your phone, just, yeah, don't turn your phone. And unfortunately on YouTube, it's going to be flipping around. I don't know. I'll have to see if I can do some fancy editing. It might take me a while to get the video on YouTube after I have to, like, cut every few seconds. I don't know. I might just leave it and put a warning. All right. So this is one of the faces that we drew, and let's do something in non-traditional colors. Now, um, when I did the original, oh good, let's see, let me try that on the iPad. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. When I did the original sample, this one, I started with a color called Tiger's Eye. which looks like this. This is Tiger's Eye. And just like with um, the other face, I'm going to take this color and I'm going to go around the edges of the face. The dark side of the nose. Rinse off my brush. And blend out the color. Following the same steps that you did already, the nose holes under the lip, maybe a little bit here in the corner of the eye. So I was more concerned when I did this style of a face with just getting something that was dark and cool in the shadows and something that was bright and warm in the um, highlighted places. Yeah, so that's interesting face. And then um, I used, nah, yeah, I think I used New Gamboge. Yeah, so there's this bright orange yellow color called New Gamboge. It looks like this. It's a really strongly pigmented color. And I put some on the cheeks and on the chin, the neck. Makes the face really bright and yellow. Then a lot of water really quickly so that it doesn't dry and you don't get, you know, a streak of color. Think about when you're doing faces in non-traditional colors, instead of worrying about matching skin tones, you just have to um, think about what colors suggest lightness, brightness, and warmth, and which ones suggest shadow and darkness. So cool colors versus warm colors. This is definitely a warm color. So then I went in with... Um, Well, the purple I used on the other girl's hair on the sample is called Moon Glow. 
It's in the notes. <laughs> it's this gray purple color. It's definitely a cool color. Now, to continue to work on her face now, we need to add some more shadows back. And you could add cool, and we could do it with the moon glow. I have some moon glow here on the palette. I think it's mixed with a little bit of um, Payne's Gray, but that it's fine. It'll work. And then more blending with just plain water. I'm going to pull some of this up onto the lid lid line. I'm going to blend it in here in the outer creases. Of course, if you get too much, you can lift and just have some fun with it and experiment and play. Like I said, there is no shortcut and the only way to figure out when you're doing any face, but especially one in non-traditional colors, um, what you're going to like or not like is to play. Um, you can use the same opera pink for the lips. And we can put a little bit on the cheeks. And go back to our moon glow and I'm going to darken up this upper lip and like the corners down here. You can take some of the Prussian blue. I like Prussian blue. It's one of my favorite colors. But it's really strong so a little bit goes a long way. That's probably too much. Now she it looks like she has boogers. She has a runny nose. <laughs> Always have your rag handy. Always, um, for blotting and uh, lifting, we're supposed to call it lifting. We're not supposed to call it blotting. Lifting. Start light, work your way darker, and when you get something you like, make notes. Okay. And eventually, when you are, you're working and working and working at it in these non-traditional colors, you're going to get something that you really like that's really suggestive of a human face, but that's totally in these non-traditional colors. I would want to do the eye, I think, on this one in blue. That's the same Prussian blue. And then the pupil, of course, in black. Make sure you leave a white spot for the highlight. And if the colors bleed and blend, I wouldn't worry too much about it. So you'll get something like that. While the paint is wet, you can come in here with a damp brush, you know, that doesn't have too much pigment, on, any pigment on it, just a little bit of water. And you can kind of blend and spread things out and make it more interesting. Yeah. And that that's cute. And if you, you know, just do the half a face if that's what you're feeling up to. So we have that one and we have this one. Yeah. So let me show you how to do a third style. And you guys all may still be on the first one. That's okay. Um, but let me show you how to do a different one. got a blank piece of paper. This one is not in the sample notes. I'm going to start with that flesh tone that we made in the beginning of the broadcast. 
and I'm going to draw my face on with my paintbrush. We're not going to draw the whole face, we're going to just do part of the face, but you'll get the idea, hopefully. I'm barely touching the tip of my paintbrush to the page. Remember to shoot me questions if you guys have questions. Especially when I'm doing this part where I'm just pushing the paint out because I can totally, it's totally a good time for me to read the screen. So I've started with flush tones. It doesn't mean I have to stick with that. So I'm going to go in here with some, ooh, let's do ultramarine turquoise. I love that color. Now it can be a cool color or a warm color. It depends on what other colors are next to it. Thank you. In this case, on this face, I'm using the turquoise as a cool color. Oh, I'm so glad. So now I'm just pushing my cool color around on my face. Lifting if it goes somewhere where I don't want or I get too much. You can always add more in watercolor but it's harder to take it away and I'm actually going to use the ultramarine turquoise in her pupil remembering to leave a white spot or spots plural for her the highlight in her pupil that's pretty cool and I think I'll use again the ultramarine turquoise we'll use it for the upper lid I like that a lot. Darkening up certain sections. 
I'm still just working on the cools. I haven't worked on the warms at all. Okay, I like that a lot. So now we need to add some warms in there though. Hmm. Let's see. I have this color called Rod Rodonite. Rodonite. It's like a dusky pink. Looks like this. Reminds me of dusty rose, a dusty rose color. I'm going to put it on the cheeks. I'm going to put a little bit on this lower lip. And then I'm going to come in here with just water. Move it around. If you get too much, get your rag in there. You can go in with the flesh color. And just experiment and play. I love when I'm painting with acrylics using neon colors as my warm. Um, with watercolor, it is a little bit um, harder to come across a good neon color. Um, the closest I've found is this Opera Pink by Daniel Smith, which is a really great bright color, which is what this is right now. And I'm just going to put it in a couple of spots. I also have this new Gamboge, uh, which is really bright. That's the really bright yellow. And just play and have fun. And like I said before, when you get something that you're happy with and that you like, make some notes on it so that you know when it comes time to repeat it, you know what it was about that that you liked and what it was about it that you didn't like. If you really want to get detailed, there's that little thing underneath the nose, above your upper lip. I don't know what it's called. Still didn't do anything with her iris, did I? Let's do... Um, let's do a couple of colors of uh, turquoise colors. This is cobalt turquoise, uh, teal, sorry, cobalt teal. And then some of the ultramarine turquoise around the outer edge. The outer edge of the iris is usually a little bit darker than the um, part near the pupil. There we go. So she's cute. I might have to scan her, leave her the way she is and scan her. She's kind of cute. Now, if you want to get really crazy with it and you really want to be free and open with your watercolors, then you want to do something like this. Let's see, what color do I want to use? I think I want to use the cobalt. And make a little puddle, puddle of the paint and some water. Now that's cute. That I, I like that. I'm going to have to just leave her that way. She might end up getting scanned and put into my Etsy shop. So does anybody have any questions? Thank you. This is my favorite way to do a face with non-traditional colors. I can do it the other way, but it's not my favorite. 
Um, so, but you guys might prefer, you know, something with more traditional skin tone. Um, but I want you to play and don't be afraid to play and experiment. And we will be doing an, at least one more faces video because faces are not uh, broadcast. Sorry, this is not video, not yet. Um, and we um, can't get faces in just one broadcast. That just can't, that's not possible. <laughs> acrylic, yes. So I um, my next acrylic uh, scope is this coming Monday. Every other Monday is Monday with Deco Art Live. So the next one is this coming Monday. Yeah, this is my favorite way to do a face. And maybe we'll do a face on Monday with Deco Art. You guys let me know uh, what you want to do. Uh, feel free to join my Facebook group, which is called A Life of Art and Self-Expression. Um, you can find the link to my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and everything else in on my website, ginabarons.com. Um we have a document started for Watercolor Wednesday Live um, where we have um, suggestions for upcoming episodes. So we have a schedule that's been suggested by you, the viewers, which is how we did faces. And um, so if you want something you want to add to that, go into the file section and add to that document. Make a suggestion on the, in the comments or something. I don't know that I don't remember right now if we have one for Monday with Deco Art. We may, but we may not. And if we don't, and you'd like to see that, suggest it in the group and we'll create one today. And if you have certain things you'd like to see for upcoming episodes, let me know. Like, you know, this coming Monday, if you want to see a face, we can do a face. Face. Okay, we can do a face. The Facebook group is called A Life of Art and Self Expression. And you should find a link to it here on my on my website. And there is the PDF document for today's um, Watercolor Wednesday episode is available in my Etsy shop. I believe it's two dollars. They seem to always be between six and eight pages. I only have a couple of them created so far. Any other questions? Don't forget to um, support the live broadcasts um, by shopping in my Etsy shop. Um, and um, there's fan funding uh, button on my YouTube channel, all that sort of stuff. Um, although it's not required, we're going to keep broadcasting live. And uh, I think that's it right now. Don't forget to have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Like play with your paints. Do some painting. Have some fun. Create something interesting. Yeah? I really like her. I love the way she turned out. I'm going to have to, like, scan her or something. She's really cute. Sometimes that happens. You create something really pretty by accident. You're welcome, Mark. Remember if you were doing a masculine face, guys, that you would do a flatter eyebrow, less arched eyebrow, no eyelashes, um... Less full lips, more of a square jawline, um, and usually I do a little bit more of a closed eye, like a less open eye for a guy. It just makes it look more masculine. I don't know why. All right. I will see you guys all later. I have other things to tape, and I think I probably need to do something about lunch soon. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys later. This was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, um, if you're not part of the Facebook group, go join and let me know what you want to see. All right, bye guys.